Hello and welcome to episode five. What? Are we starting? Yeah, we're going for it. We're, we're getting on with it. What? But this is a Christmas special. I'm wearing this. Where's your outfit? Uh, well, I mean, we've been so busy. We've all been busy. We've got travel guides going on. By the time people watch it, I mean, it's going to be more like a New Year special. Oh. But don't worry, you'll be fine. I mean, you know, everyone's going to love you in your, in your Mrs. Santa outfit. Oh, it's a bit cold, though. Yeah, it is a bit chilly, actually, isn't it? <coughs> Coming up in this episode We announced the F1 Acid winner Shin's Piglet We launched the North Wham competition World News We count down our top 10 web videos of 2011 And finish with a Kirsty Jones profile Well, it's the Christmas holiday, so I thought, Jim, why don't we start with a Christmas present? Let's do that. All right, so last episode, we had the F1 Acid up for grabs. First of all, let's see it in action in F1's awesome Anton Joy film, which appears later on in our top 10 video countdown. Far away, a germ in my mind. To be in with a chance of winning this, all you had to do was be a fan on our Facebook fan page. So we dipped our fingers into the digital Facebook hat and the winner is Greg Masson. Woo! What a Christmas present. Well done. We'll be in touch to sort your prize out. Now, Annalise, I did get you a little present actually. As no, it's Christmas. Jim, you didn't have to Merry do Christmas. that. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. Right. Oh the, my gosh. It's a little thing I found. Oh, brilliant. I hope you like it. What's this? You got me pigs in blankets from Aldi. What a cheapskate. You know who you should have got these for, right? Who? Mark Shirley loves them. Does he? Yes, look. Uh, this, is a, this is a fun little project that I've been playing with for, a, for about 18 months now. And it's kind of trying to make uh, three boards in one. I, uh, for travelling I wanted a board that um, could work like a skim board in light wind, so good for pop shove it and, and skim tricks, flip tricks. Um, but I wanted to combine it with one board that when there's small waves on shore is still, is still fun to carve around on and ride strapless or with straps. Or, and also I, uh, I thought it would be funny to have a board that I can do a few old school board off tricks with. And, and this is what came from it. It's 4 foot 10 which means it fits into my twin tip board bag, which is ideal for traveling. Um, we went with the, this current version has the rail grips all around, making it easier to grab both strapless tricks and for, for board off tricks. And as you can see, it's pretty wide, um, which means it's light wind performance is very good. Uh, not as good as a skim board, but it's, it's not too far away. And, um, and we went for uh, experimenting a little bit with, with channels and ridges in the nose. The idea being that um, you can ride the board backwards, not really to ride it backwards, but if you land the trick backwards, it doesn't slide out away from you as soon as you land on the water. Um, we, <laughs> we christened this board Piglet uh, because it's maybe not the most attractive looking shape we've ever made, but it's really fun and it's something that I think it's something that might see it into the production lineup soon, uh, as it does fill so many, so many gaps in a in the quiver in one board. Um, with this board and a twin tip, I can go to most places in Europe and know I'm going to have fun, whatever the whatever the conditions throw up. Jim, I like what you've done with the place. It's really Christmassy. Thanks, Annalise. Yeah, we've put a few bits up. We've got a little tree over there. A little card from a reader there. That's nice. Always got time for a bit of glitter. Mm. Advent calendar from my mum. What about that calendar? What's that? This one? No, no. This isn't really a. This isn't an advent calendar. This is. Um, 
This is just a can of the best girls that they send out. Yeah, uh, yeah, sort of have it by the desk. It's got Kristen Berza in it though. Oh, Kristen, yeah. Yeah, she did Rumble Me though, and she turned up in the summer and it was her month and she's sort of in a bikini, sort of by the desk. A bit <coughs> embarrassing, really. And she put it on Facebook. Caught you red handed. Stop letching, Jim. Uh, anyway, where's this link going? World News. The KSP and the PKRA both finished since we last saw you and Canada seen its first speed event. So let's catch up on all that and hear from some of the main headline makers. So yeah, to win the title, uh, that's amazing. That's uh, what I've always been on, uh, always been on the tour for. It's, it's, it's the goal you want to reach. And you know, finally this year, 2011, I finally got it. And, uh, yeah, it's an amazing feeling and I was also I was nearly there to win every single tour stop but that didn't happen in the end but still uh, yeah I got the world title and uh, that was my main goal for this year so yeah I reached my goal and uh, dreams come true. I think uh, why this year uh, I could finally uh, become first in the, in the PKRA is uh, because I learned from my mistakes that I made last year in 2010. Uh, I had all the tricks, I, uh, I think I had what needed was to win but I just didn't ride steady enough and Every time I, w I was losing on that, so one competition I was riding good and the next competition I was riding really bad, so I really learned from the mistakes, changed some things in my gear and uh, you know, uh, this year it, p it paid off and uh, I could uh, finally win the world title. The best moment, uh, uh, this season is probably an easy guess, for sure uh, Germany, uh, that's where I won the world title. Uh, I came back from the water, hadn't, didn't have a, a really good heat but I had uh, one massive back mop and I think uh, that trick really helped me uh, to win that heat. And, you know, when they announced it, I was world champion. Uh, that was like, yeah, you know, the, the best day of the whole season and for, for sure the best moment of the season as well. Yeah, this year I've been, um, uh, actually this winter, I've been training a lot on, uh, on combos. So just like you do one trick, you land full speed, directly do another one, you land, do another one. And uh, I've been doing this combos like uh, every single competition almost. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that uh, what's really helped me as well to win the world title. I think people liked it, uh, judges liked it as well. and. Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely my uh, uh, speciality this year. So yeah, for everybody who's watching the kite show, keep an eye on the PQA, check out the live stream, we're definitely working on that, and like this you can follow us. Even if we're riding, you can follow everything we do, every step we make, you're gonna see us, what we do, and uh, you know, just check it out, make sure you follow every second we make in the water. It was really good to do the PKRA stops at the start of the year. It was my first real year sort of doing any world level competitions in the wave and I really enjoyed it. It was good fun, got to meet some new people and ride with some new people and I was really stoked to take out the first two events. It kind of sucked that basically that was it and there were no more events but for me it was good because it really allowed me to spend more of the year travelling, doing some of my own stuff and yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way it worked out. Indo for me was probably one of the best kite trips I've ever done. It's just so perfect with good wind, good waves. It doesn't matter if it's windy, if not you just go surfing and pretty much yeah it was it was perfect. I couldn't ask for a better location. For me I'm into both freestyle and waves. As much as I kind of like both, my real focus is on the waves. I've done sort of a bit of freestyle competing and I don't mind doing sort of the Australian comps, the national level comps, but for me I don't really see it worth it doing the, the freestyle side of it for the world comps. And that's kind of where I like to focus on the waves more. For me, being a surfer, I've grown up loving the waves and for me it's that much better. Ever. I think it was really successful. All the riders were having a great time. We had two amazing events in Mauritius and Peru, of course, and then here a lot of fun in Cabo Verde also. 
I think it was really special for the riders to have a tour that is really purely focused on wave riding and that shows kiteboarding or kite surfing to its full potential. And with our first world champions ever, with Ayrton and Ines, I think not only us as the riders, but also the, the people and the kiteboarders out there and the media are really stoked. So, good start. <laughs> well, I think, um, first of all, it, it, was a, it made a huge impact on the sport just because uh, the conditions we had in Mauritius for that first event were the best conditions we've ever seen in a kite surfing event. We had perfect, huge surf the entire time, and uh, that just allowed riders to really open up and, uh, and perform at levels that we haven't seen in competition before. Um, I think, you know, now that this strapless riding has really come of age, um, that's kind of, that event sort of set the standard for uh, strapless riding in competition and showed the world that, uh, you know, we can ride strapless even when it's huge. We don't need to put the foot straps on. If we have a big, perfect wave, we can rip it just as hard as any surfer can. So uh, I think it was definitely a, a mark on the sport and uh, really sort of raised the bar for competitive kite surfing. For the 2012 season, we have a few great events in the lineup. We will release the tour schedule in February, so until then, uh, we will have to keep you waiting a little bit, but the riders are already really excited and we are too, and I think it's only going to get better. So hopefully for next year, we're going to have two lefts and two rights on the tour and keep it fair for everyone. I still think for the first season, this certainly was the best we could deliver. Uh, we have a storm warning in effect for our coastal waters of Martha's Vineyard for Saturday, October 29th. Forecasted winds are in excess of 40 knots with gusts of 50 knots which is going to allow the riders to uh, push 50 knot averages over the 250 meters and probably see 53, 54 knot VMAX. Uh, just a great way uh, to end the event and a great way to announce to the world that Martha's Vineyard has some of the world's best speed sailing sites available. You going to take tomorrow off because you have it in the bag? Nope. I would. You're not me. The North American Speed Sailing Invitational took place in October at Martha's Vineyard, USA. The first speed sailing event on American soil, it was hosted by the fastest sailor in the world, kiter Rob Douglas. Twelve of the world's fastest kiters were invited for the 14-day race period, but it was the event organizer himself that took the win and the largest chunk of the $27,000 prize purse. Rob manned up in the ballistic conditions, dominating the contest, winning 23 of the 24 events, proving he is still the man to beat. Similar to the Ryder Cup in golf, there was also a team event at the Nassi, the Lynch Cup, which was won by the French. Look out for this playing a bigger part in next year's event with teams competing for $25,000 at the 2012 Nassi. It's super! <laughs> it's super beau! It's chaud! It's chaud! There's monde. L'eau is good! Voilà, it's cool! Si on allait un peu plus vite, ça serait top. <laughs>
This is also the first entry in the countdown for William Milne of Boom Ting Productions who has weighed in heavily with some meaty videos. Impressive. I mean, look who he's got to work with. So it looks like Esa is getting a bit frustrated out there. The waves kind of died out, so it's always harsh. No way, he did, out of nothing, I was like, nah, the waves go to shit, and then all of a sudden he just goes, bam, 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 hey, I was, woo! I was here. I was nice one, well, It's running with you, man, it's gonna be good. Don't wait, mate. Makes me want to kite so bad. You grab it? Got it? You got it? I'll take you, boy. Fine then, thank you, sir. It's like having a little piece of home no matter where you go. It's that one place where you feel comfortable when you're yourself. Up next, it's one of the finest female riders in the world. 2009 Pico A World Champion Bruna Cagia with a different kind of fix by Boom Ting Productions. And Brazilian Bruna is widely known as a queen of stylish freestyle and is constantly pushing women's riding to the next level. But will her video be crowned the Kite Show video of 2011? The British Dream Team have been filming hard over the last 12 months. Dynamics sees Aaron Hadlow and Sam Light take on the Turkish waters as well as the Hypnotics Cable Park. This year saw the emergence of synchronised riding as a competition form, essentially made up of teams doing the same thing on the water and mirroring each other's moves. Watch for more of this in contests next season and see these two wake style wizards throwing it down in sections of dynamics. It's Kyle only four in one. I am Kyle Lenny. This is four in one.
Thankfully, we're not just running clips of Reuben prattling about while Aaron does the business in this countdown. Oh no, our old mate Loopy Lenton finally got back onto the water after eight months off due to an ankle injury. It's good to have him back. Here's how he decided to make his comeback. So we woke up today and the Levant is just blowing super strong. So I'm going to jump from the Mediterranean Sea into the Atlantic Ocean uh, with a big mega loop or something. So check it out, Lenten is back bitches. Woo! Swells up, winds up, and uh, we're going to hit the road and hopefully get a session in before dark. So, yeah. Where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> Only an hour outside of Perth, the traffic lights and cityscapes soon give way to sandy roads and remote beaches. It was time to wash off the dust and get on the water. Life on the road. The Filthy West is a proper road trip video along Australia's west coast. Narrated by photographer Jason Walcott, who we profiled last episode, of course, it's an hour and 15 minutes of laid back, sloppy surf sessions and more full on pit riding in some of Australia's most out of the way places. Feature length and documentary styled follow Ben Wilson, Ian Aldridge, Josh Mulcoy and Ryland Blakeney and their every incident on a character filled adventure as they load up the camper vans and chase the wind. There's all you'd expect from a good old West Oz roadie, including the odd shark yarn and hitting a crazy slab known as Blood Rock. Rawr. A rotting whale carcass lay on a heap just up the beach. I actually think we were the uninvited guests to that dinner party. Anyway, the wind was up and kite surfers travel faster than great white sharks, don't they? It was all about being in the right place at the right time for Fiji in 2011, and Ben Wilson was, twice. Ben is incredibly methodical and scientific in his approach to trips and scoring the best swells possible. He runs his life around it. Getting the biggest and heaviest strapless wave we've ever seen and being there for the swell of the year was no fluke. It was all carefully planned. Giant Clouds takes you behind the scenes and deep into the thick of the action telling the story behind that swell with Ben and his BWS team riders. At 20 minutes long, it's about the right time to kick back and easily sink a beer to this evening. I was on, uh, you know, my 6'1", strapless, and it was not meant to be ridden on that wave. And I remember just going down the face of the wave, and it actually never let me get to the bottom of the wave. It just kept, there was so much water drawing off the reef, and I'd already picked a line and I knew where I had to go, but I just could never get there. And I felt like the whole wave, I was just on my tippy toes, just going, you know, like any second, this is gonna go completely wrong. So what do you think? Should daredevils like Lewis Cratham be celebrated for their bravery or be criticised for such a dangerous stunt? Well, today the stunt by Lewis Cratham was described as very dangerous by the owners of Brighton Pier. Today the owners of Brighton Pier describe the jump as a very dangerous thing to do. A spokesman from the pier said the stunt was extremely dangerous and they had refused him permission to jump. Conditions were perfect, high winds and big waves. And in case you missed it, here it is again. Now you all know about Lewis Craven's jump over Brighton Pier. We've featured it here on the show, you've read it in magazines, you've probably seen it on TV as well. Jonathan Brooks from United Magic Films shot this 30 minute documentary in the build up to the jump and after the jump so you could see exactly what was involved and how much preparation Lewis put in. It wasn't just a turn up, send it and hope for the best kind of job you know. No, he practiced diving too. Initially a paid-for download movie, it's now free for everyone to watch. You know, I've had lines break midway around the loop, and I've literally just been free-falling out the sky. And because of stuff like this, I can jump off higher than this, I'm much higher, I understand where my body is. So if things are going wrong in kind, you can relax and know where you are in relation to the water and get you out of a lot of problems. Right, you need to go to sleep for about 12 minutes. It's so windy, did you hear it last night? It's a better view out this one. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's sort of round to meet you here. So it's on for today. 
I think so. Depends if the wind's the right angle. In general, I think, if anything, it made me feel alive. It made me feel like a human being. Like I'd gone to a place I hadn't been before. I think that's what's important as being a human being, is that that's what you're put, on, put here to do. It's your job, is to keep experiencing new feelings, and this was a big new feeling for me. Probably the most alive I've ever felt in my life. Looking down at the pier and thinking, I've, I've dealt with it, I've done it. F1 are a dead cert in any best of video countdown with their annual blockbusters. 2011's mega release was Antandroy. We've only got one spot left in the countdown, but two great British parody films. One is stylish, technical and beautifully shot with up to the minute riding, and there's already a part two. The other is at the opposite end of the spectrum and shot in complete contrast in 4-3 format. There's no music and there's much more going on behind the scenes than just the outfit. But both are comedy gold in our eyes. You decide which is which, but we love both so we've made it a countdown of 11. And then, uh, then I ride until, uh, until it gets dark. Then uh, maybe uh, some smoked fish for dinner or something. So a lot of people ask me how I can, how I can live this amazing lifestyle that a lot of people are jealous of. The way I see it, money is, a, is an energy. And I've got a lot of positive energy at the moment. So it flows through me so I'm able... Money comes to me and also... Um, I had a rather big inheritance, which which helps quite a bit. But the the main thing is the the energy. Uh, when I first saw kite surfing, yeah, I was truly inspired. Seeing people fly through the sky, just sail across the sea, you know. Had to be part of it. Yo, where did the sun go? Erased by the cars I've got Haze and gun smoke Through the rain as I speak my bars The light of the streets that leap the stars The air that we're breathing is poison And people wear fake cams who were boys Yeah, kite launching's a quite a new concept in the sport, you know The riders getting paid to ride You know, I should be getting paid to, paid to launch I'm uh, currently out here in Dominican uh, with Tom Court at the moment He's hired me for the last two weeks, he flew me out and I've basically just been here to launch his kites. Right, time for thank yous, especially to North for sponsoring this episode, to Ding from Super Saturated TV who's helped out with loads of footage and bits and pieces, to Ben Asselman, the Exmouth Music Powerhouse who's again stepped up with some more music, uh, and if Craig, the editor, is doing his job, you should be able to see their details springing up in front of you now. So playing us out this episode is a profile on Kirsty Jones from Ding himself. Now Kirsty came back this year from a long injury uh, at the Peru KSP event and she managed to bag herself a world tour podium at her first event back. So well done lady, nice lady in fact. So see you all in 2012. Indeed. Have a great new year. Annalise. Yeah. Where are they? Cracker? Are they from Aldi? Because I bet they won't even bang. Bet you. No, <sighs> it didn't work.
Jones. I'm, I'm a Welsh kite surfer. I've been kite surfing for about nine years now. I was, well, I still am a surfer, windsurfer, and ocean lover. I think anyone who's ever tried kite surfing can uh, understand the amazing, intense feelings you get from it. So I love it because it's so diverse. You can you can go whatever way you want. You can ride waves. You can do freestyle. You can do massive jumps, or you can just kite surf out to the horizon and enjoy the space and freedom all around you. I've been competing in kite surfing for about seven years and I had a break from it the last uh, year because of my knee injury and operation and, and then I actually started to get the, the hunger back for competing so I decided to, to, to start again and actually it's, it's been really sort of refreshing to have this break from injury because I've realised a lot of things and had time to reflect and now coming back into competition I'm, I'm not putting so much pressure on myself and just trying to enjoy competing, trying to enjoy pushing my level and hopefully other people's levels. I, I run kite surfing, surfing and yoga courses and retreats and it's great to be able to help others, whether it's kite surfers or sports people, to, to feel the benefits of yoga. I think actually yeah, yoga could be a, a, a revolution, not only in, in, in kite surfing, but also in sport because of the way it connects the, the, the body, mind, um, and sort of breathing, and the soul and everything, and uh, I'm not explaining this very well, sorry. Okay, what's the question then? <laughs> you're so connected to the ocean, um, you start to realise and become aware of what's going on and, and the threats and how delicate the ocean is. So I try and do my bit wherever I can, where if whatever country I'm in, I try and get involved with various marine conservation charities and just try and open people's eyes to what's going on in our oceans.